Triclos formations are something that's always eluded me. I've never made one. I've never even attempted to make one. But in today's video, I'm in a strikerless free back formation, which has done very, very well. What's going on there, guys? Kempi here, and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video and another tactic today, and one which I've come up with the idea of. The, the strikerless concept is not something new. It's something that has been around the FM games now for a couple of years. have been a bit of a trend. And I've decided to make a strikerless formation for myself. But not only did I task myself with making a strikerless formation, I tasked myself with making a three-back strikerless formation because why not push the boat out? So if you guys can, just make sure to smash the like button on this video. Subscribe to the channel as well because this one took me quite a lot of tweaking, quite a lot of getting right. But I finally made the formation and you can see straight away, PSG, we've done quite well with it. It's not invincible. It's very difficult to make a three-back strikerless formation. But it is very nice in game, and I will show you some gameplay of this formation with PSG as well. So, 99 goal difference, 102 points. It's a Centurion season. It's just not invincible, but we don't mind that. We managed to get to the semi finals of the Champions League as well. We ended up getting knocked out by Liverpool, which is a bit frustrating because they're now in a final with Real Madrid. But Mbappe got the top goal scorer, so he still loves scoring goals. The Coupe de France, we ended up being winners of that one, a 4 1 victory against Nice, and that is the game I'll show you when we go into a bit of in-match gameplay as well. And the trophy champ we lost, which is infuriating because I often start these on the 1st of August and that takes place in the 29th of July or something. So ignore that. I can't control that. That's not my fault. Blame the game. That's not me. Um, and I'm going to get pretty pretty into it with the formation nice and quick today. We managed to score 3.11 goals per game, conceding just 0 0.5, which I'm very happy with. With a three-back formation, that's very good. And 118 goals as well, considering we have no striker. Again, very, very happy with 19 goals conceded as well. 24 clean sheets. Possession-wise, we were second on 59. Uh, Leon just apparently kept the ball all season and didn't do much else with it. Great pass percentage as well. We were second with 88. We had the most shots on 751 and the fewest shots against on 229. But the formation itself, like I said, I do not want to make... Uh, waste too much time going through everything else. I want to show you the formation and I want to show you how it works as well. So I'm going to go through the formation and then we'll go through sort of an in-game situation as well because why on earth not? So in goal, it's a goalkeeper on defend. No further instructions. Nice and basic. Three ball playing defenders uh, on defend. The two wider ones, the left one and the right one, both with stay wider. And uh, that is obviously because they're going to then occupy these roles that the wing backs are known on Green and it's a tactic for quite a good side and the middle centre-back should be good enough to cover that off. So the wing-back on support on the right, stay wider and tackle harder. Same on the left, two DLPs on support in the middle, both with tackle harder. And inside forward on attack on the left, sit narrower. And inside forward on attack on the right, sit narrower. And a shallow striker on attack in the cam roll with shoot more often and tackle harder. And I think what makes the shallow, a, a strikerless formation work really well is the fact that the shallow striker just sits in the hole. We'll go into it with some gameplay because I, I have watched quite a few games and played some myself with this formation. And... It's like you have the, so say if it's a 4 2 3 1, you're matched up against the, the 2 and the 4. They often just find themselves in that gap, um, and that's when they, they so float in there, so they're not on the last man, and then all of a sudden they burst through, and then they're 1 and 1, or they'll pick up the ball in that tight space, and the striker will then offload into the inside forwards, etc. And also, because we've got two deep line playmakers in midfield, They've just going to have a lot of time on the ball, just finding that right pass, that killer ball, that killer ball out wide to Mbappe or Messi and, or the killer ball through the lines into Neymar where he can turn and make that ball into the inside forward. So two deep line playmakers as well. It's not something I've ever really used before. Two playmakers don't often work. We've seen it on Twitter in the last couple of days and Omega Luke shutting someone down because he was saying the playmakers don't work together. Well, they can work together and this is another instinct of showing that it can. I've actually got it set as a balanced mentality as well because... I did want to, if you're too positive with a free back, you do end up just getting absolutely killed. So it's a balanced mentality. In possession, it's set to shorter passing, slightly higher tempo, play out of the defence and overlap left and right with passing into space and also work the ball into the box. So the wing backs are also going to be bobbing on. So hopefully they can be an option when Mbappe or Messi comes inside. So they're going to be nice and handy for us as a standard uh, attacking width as well and also low crosses. Um, counter press, counter, distribute quickly and take short kicks um it's good to have a high pressing system especially when you've got quite a lot of options in that free up top roll uh, they can go and sort of fetch the ball which is quite nice and uh, our possession is a high press system standard defensive line prevent i've actually got potential distribution on because 
is a shallow striker, you don't want him pushing too far up into that striker role. So otherwise it sort of defeats the object. Uh, but trigger the press as much as possible indeed. Um, but the actual gameplay itself, like I said, I'm going to show you this 4-1 victory against Nice. Before we do get into some actual in-match gameplay, if you guys can make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel and follow and all these four wonderful things as well as Instagram because obviously I'm now over on Instagram. I've still got the banner up as well for a thousand subs because to be honest, I forgot to take it down, but it's been about a week now and I'm still massively thankful. So thank you very, very much. We've got over 50 subs in this week as well. So the numbers are fantastic and you guys are smashing it. So just make sure to keep sharing the videos, keep smashing the support as well. You guys are genuinely changing my life. Now, I couldn't find a good um, game with PSG. It was all like two ones and three ones, but I've come over to the Ajax save and we'll go through how we did with Ajax in just a second. But this is a 3-0 victory against Utrecht. Um, the reason I couldn't show you the PSG one is because the save file doesn't go back far enough to see the Nice game, which is frustrating. I need to almost save it every month to show you guys the games I want to. But you can see here straight away, we haven't got a striker. Uh, I believe it's Kudas playing in the cam, uh, in the right wing role. Bergwijn's in cam, Tadic out on the left. Uh, Window is the left wing back, Taylor and Klaassen in midfield with Wrench at right back with Grillish. Timber and Bassi as the back three. And you can see Kudas getting in to the positions, getting right to the byline and cutting it back into Bergwijn, who is open in space. He's dropped in to his cam roll. He's not sitting in this six yard box. He is very much on the penalty spot. And that is because he's set a little bit deeper. He's a shadow striker. He's not as an advanced forward or a poacher in the box. Dusan Tanic scoring a penalty. It's an unbelievable goal. The formation's fantastic. Down the tactic right now. And there's another goal. It's a corner. It's Tadic whipping it in. It's Timber getting up for it. It drops to David Klaassen and he puts it in for 3-0. To be honest, not the best game to really show too much. But that first goal was all I managed to watch and then decided it was going to be the video I'd show you. So a 3-0 victory with Ajax showing a very good goal by Bergwijn and the rest a little bit set PC. But we move on from that. We did end up winning the Eredivisie uh, by a single point by final two in real life and run away with the league. So... Quite happy with that. We won the KMV Becker. And we also won the Johan Cruyff Skull. Uh, Liverpool were our absolute dynamos in this save. They knocked out us with PSG and with Ajax. So we all hate Liverpool. We hate them anyway. Uh, in terms of the goals, I need to go back and show you this with PSG. They are spread out quite nicely. You've obviously got the front three getting pretty much all of the goals. But they're not like you've got the, the shadow striker getting all of them. The left wing getting all of them. The right wing, it's nice and spread out. You've got 26 goals and 4 assists. From Kudus playing in the middle role. Tadic with 22 goals and uh, 12 assists. Bergwijn, 14 goals, 4 assists. And Steven Berghaus with 11 goals and 9 assists. 8 assists coming from uh, both Kenneth Taylor and Davy Clarsen as well. And the wingbacks getting a little bit involved. Uh, 3 from Wrench, 4 from Timber. Um, and there must be a left wing back somewhere with the assists. If we can see it. If not, I'm blind. It's Window with 8 assists. So Window also getting in on the assists uh, and PSG uh, goals and everything coming from a lot more places. So let me get rid of that. So we got uh, 10 goal, 9 goals, 16 assists coming from Fabian, 10 goals coming from Danilo Pereira, uh, 16 goals, 28 assists coming from Messi, 22 goals and 9 assists coming from Carlos Soler, 40 goals and 24 assists coming from Neymar, and 40 goals and 10 assists coming from Kylian Mbappe. So impressive that the goals are coming from lots of different places. You've got Verratti getting 10 assists. You've got Ramos getting 8 goals, 2 assists. You've got Hakimi getting 9 assists. You've got it coming from all over the place. And you can see as well the corners are rather good. Uh, the corner tactics I have, I have pretty much on every single uh, video. It's the Galore R. I found it on Sword of SI and they're fantastic. And they just come, it, uh, they come as standard with the tactics. So if you guys are looking for corner tactics as well, Feel free to download this because it gets you lots of goals. And corners just do score lots of goals on this year's FM. There's another team I want to show you as well because obviously we've tested with two powerhouses of Ajax and PSG. Now it's time to show you the results in the championship. And when I did start doing this formation, I was watching the Sunderland game against uh, Luton. And I was inspired by Sunderland to make... Uh, well, to put them in the video, really. Uh, they've obviously got knocked out since. And my star boy, Ahmad, is not going to a playoff final. But he's back at United, which is great to see. And you can see in the championship as well, with a strikerless formation, which is very unorthodox. We did manage to come third in the league. Uh, 87 points, four clear of Watford. 10 off Blackburn, to be fair, and about 15 off Norwich. But they weren't playing strikerless, so they're not cool. And in terms of our goals, they're coming from 19 from Joel Geldhart. Uh, 15 from Ahmad Diallo. 14 from Jack Clark. 
13 from uh, Elliot Embleton, 9 goals, 10 assists from uh, Alex Pritchard as well. So goals and assists come from all over the place. Even the championship, we're above average on goals per game and we've conceded per game. So I was happy to make this work in sort of a different setting as well. I mean, Sunderland in real life have obviously done very well. They're predicted to come mid-table on FM and their, their squad isn't fantastic. A lot of it is good lone players and obviously they've got Ahmad and Joffe. So there's some fantastic lone players in there, but I feel like we've managed to test it at a decent different level as well. This tactic will work better with stronger sides. It just will. It's a free back. It's strikeless. It's a little bit different. So if you're predicted to come 20th in the Premier League, do not plug in this tactic and expect it to work. But we are going to be using this tactic for rebuild with Southampton. We're going to start them off in the championship because luckily enough in this save, they managed to drop down into the championship anyway. So we're going to be starting them in the championship and seeing how far we can take Southampton in five years using a strikeless formation. So make sure to come back on Wednesday for that one. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll speak to you next time.